Hey everyone and thank you for viewing this video. Uh, this is an update to Speedtrap Consulting's uh, line of turbochargers, a description and review of an oldie but goodie, the well-renowned uh, Silver Surfer. Uh, there's been some changes made for 2014, uh, but what I wanted to be able to do with this particular one is not go through an entire video as we had before. If you want to look at the full range of what the Surfer could be able to do, go ahead and check out the other video, but this is simply uh, one about an update for 2014. Uh, but we'll go through our quick five points because there have been some significant changes uh, to the surfer over the last year or so to be able to meet the demands uh, of today's high rotational speed, high boost pressure kind of market. So as usual we'll go through our engine size application, our purpose, power level and characteristics, our composition, and of course some specifications. All right, for engine size application, when we look at four, six, and eight cylinder applications, for the four cylinder group, we're looking at uh, this turbo to be used in a 1.8 to 2.4 liter category, especially those that have a high volumetric efficiency head. Uh, for six cylinder, this would be in the 2.5 liter to three liter category. Okay, not so big a displacement, but something that's going to have like a little bit more of a camshaft with that particular uh, setup to be able to reach over the 500 wheel horsepower range. And then, of course, for the eight cylinder, anything from four liter and larger. Uh, we find that the VA category guys like to be able to use these in twins because they're still compact in size uh, and can make a lot of power uh, despite its particular size. So uh, most of these guys typically use, they're about 4.6 liter or higher and uh, use these as a twin application. Well, let's look at the purpose. Purpose is really the compact response mid-range monster that the Silver Surfer has always been. Uh, what we decided to change for for 2014 was its effective RPM and boost pressure range because in the previous uh, model uh, there were some limitations uh, honestly that uh, held the Silver Surfer up from being its use. They weren't overextended but uh, definitely some, some limitations that we wanted to be able to address and still at the same time uh, keep a cost effective uh, package. Uh, really this is going to be um, those that want a, a lower cost uh, determination for uh, a high performance driving event uh, or a street uh, a car that's going to be able to have over 400 wheel horsepower without worrying about if they're past their effective range but still wants to stay less than the um, some of the higher ball bearing model series that's out there so you know we're including ourselves in this the GTX uh, series uh, as well as some of the other companies um, billet series and their ball bearing series so uh, the power level for this has actually been increased from before where the extensiveness that we thought that this actually was was about 550 wheel horsepower. Uh, this has actually now been changed with the introduction of some new components to now its upper end power is going to be about 560 to 580 wheel horsepower range. Um, and it's an improved range of boost without the surge possibilities that were present from the previous model. Um, you can see the first video what I mean about um, you know, its limitations in terms of surge possibilities. Uh, but let's go to the composition for that. As I said, it's very similar to the standard Silver Surfer Mark II that you've seen in a previous video that's been around for a while. This is still in a T04B uh, compressor cover that's been extrude honed, 2.7 inch uh, compressor wheel inlet, 2 inch outlet. Okay, uh, and as you notice though, the compressor wheel is a little different. This is now using our T6 7075 aluminum six bladed 59 pound per minute compressor wheel. This is the main reason why we're able to eliminate some of the high rotational speed uh, surge uh, that's usually present in the uh, previous Silver Surfer past uh, 27, 28 pounds of boost pressure. So with this, we were able to improve effective range uh, from 14 PSI to about 29 PSI uh, and really helped uh, with responsiveness by about another 100 RPM. So we're looking at maximum boost pressure under 20 pounds of boost for most uh, four-cylinder, six-cylinder applications by about 38 to 4,000 RPM. 3,800 to 4,000 RPMs is actually pretty good for a journal bearing turbo. Let's look at the rest of the package here. Of course, we have our usual um, optional water cooling which is 3 inch dash 6 NPT which is recommended as I said in the other video nothing cools like water it's always great to be able to have that as a possibility this keeps the oil from reaching a high temperature flash point where it turns on the carbon or starts coking the uh, turbine oil ceiling ring uh, and it lets the oil do its job of lubrication for the bearings and yet at the same time inside this jacket 
temperatures within the cartridge are going to be a lot lower when it comes to water. This is why OEM uses this all the time. Of course we have uh, below our standard uh, T3-T4 discharge in terms of the oil return. Please try to avoid using 90 degree fittings with this because it could cause an oil backup. This is just to be sure. And up here if you notice this uses a 1 8 NPT thread pitch for this fitting. Now, if you notice, there's actually a restrictor on this particular one, and a lot of people ask whether or not a restrictor is actually needed. Some say, well, because it's journal bearing, it's not needed. With ball bearings, you must. I say always, always, always look at oil pressure at cold start, especially when it comes to Garrett cartridges. For this type of size and this type of style of Garrett cartridge, Anything over 75 pounds of uh, oil pressure at cold start is going to require a 60 to 65 thousand soil restrictor. No smaller. Uh, you don't want to be able to starve the cartridge at the same time. So this particular one is in dash three. There are dash fours that are available for those that want to use an inline oil filter. But anything over 75 pounds of pressure, please use a restrictor with this. So you notice, like I said here, this is using a standard uh, T3 flanged uh, turbine housing. This particular one is using a uh, 5 bolt forge style housing in a .63 AR. Uh, the standard one uh, typically is a T31 2.5 inch 4 bolt uh, turbine housing in a 6.3 AR. But the reason why we don't go any larger with this particular application even at over 500 wheel horsepower is because we're using a 71 millimeter exhaust wheel which is a really good match uh, for this particular compressor wheel which is at 59 pounds a minute. Okay, We've tried to be able to go larger than 59 pounds a minute and we have found that uh, that causes way too many issues uh, for this particular compressor cover. This is where you have to actually go larger to something like a, a TO4E or even a TO4S cover. So let's look at the specifications right now. Like I said, uh, this is uh, 59 pounds a minute Okay, for that with an from the exducer over 5 millimeters of uh, an extended tip on the exducer. Okay, so this is something that's really going to be able to help convert airflow into pressurized air much more quickly than the previous model. Okay, but we have found that for the inlet on this one, that we're looking at about uh, uh, 580 wheel horsepower with this particular one. So it spools really quick, uh, especially for a journal bearing application. Well, I like this turbo, it's been a staple for over 10 years. And I think that uh, with today's engine demands and uh, boost pressure demands that are going out in the market, I think this is a fantastic choice to be able to use for those that still want to have a good compact turbocharger for within a high quality content at a really good budgeted price. Um, it's for those that want to be able to get a good quality Garrett with a twist. So uh, this is one of the best ones that I've, I've really ever seen, you know, in a very long time. So. If there's any questions, of course, please give an email over at info at speedtrapconsulting.com. And as always, boost safe. Take care.